I'm Keep Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Punisher the Platoon, issue number one. Famed author and definitive Frank Castle writer Garth Ennis returns to tell us a tale of Frank's earliest time in the military. What'll happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out. Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we check on in with a bunch of aging nom vets from Kilo Company, aka Frank Castle. Castle's original Vietnam squad. A couple of these faces might actually seem familiar if you read the classic Garth and his Punisher Max story, The Valley Forge. It would seem a journalist has gotten all these guys together because he wants a little bit more insight into Frank Castle's time during Vietnam, not his final mission, the one that we saw in Bourne. No, this guy wants to hear about his first command back before Frank Castle was the Punisher, back when he was just a fresh-faced new recruit, a young Lieutenant Castle. It seems that in his first First assignment, Frank has inherited a ton of problems. The men are undisciplined, chaotic, and because they're so far out into enemy territory, nothing, no good supplies actually come their way. All the same though, Frank is ready to whip these guys into shape, and because of it he gets everyone together the next morning to go on a patrol into Viet Cong territory. For the most part, it's a pretty quiet patrol, almost too quiet in fact. One of the privates eventually speaks up and tells Frank that the previous commander had cut a deal with the Viet Cong leader in the area. Essentially, as long as the Americans didn't go poking around a particular village, no one would get shot in the night. Frank's only been in charge for a day and a half, and he decides that nope, this will not stand, and as such calls in a massive naval palm strike to this village. Artillery and an abundance of air support being one of the only things this new assignment actually has coming with it. As we discover, the village did indeed have enemy forces in it, but here's where things actually start to get interesting. You see, the latter half of the issue doesn't focus on Frank at all. Instead, it focuses on a VC sniper, a woman who is apparently very feared even within the ranks of the Viet Cong. She had been lining up the perfect shot on Frank before he ended up calling in the airstrike, forcing her to flee. The Viet Cong generals tell her to slow down and not overextend herself. The Tet Offensive will be coming soon, and with that, the war will be over. But it's pretty clear this lady isn't going to listen to reason, and that Frank Castle has just become her own personal white whale. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering what's with the radical shift in perspective when the framing device of this story was a journalist asking a bunch of Frank's old war buddies about his first command. Well, surprisingly, the vets feel the exact same way, and as the comic winds down, the supposed journalist who brought them all together is going to tell them how he knows knows this side of the story. So that was Punisher the Platoon number one, everybody, and overall it definitely feels like putting on a warm glove that is a Garth Ennis story, filled to the brim with military recreations. The dude loves his war stories and tells them like no one else. Admittedly, here it's a bit of a blessing and a curse. There's a ton of period accurate Vietnam war jargon that might turn people off who aren't already very familiar with that. This is also very much a prequel through and through to Garth Ennis's other Punisher work, so if you haven't read Born and haven't read the Valley Forge, you probably should if you want to understand what's going on here in its completeness. Overall though, interesting setup. I will definitely be coming back to see how this whole thing shakes out. It's been so long since we've gotten a Garth Ennis Punisher story, and I would give this one an 8 out of 10. So that's Punisher, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, why not check out some of the other videos I have available on my channel, then you can follow me on social media at Cape Joel. And if you like my work and want to support me, then you might want to become a patron. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get exclusive access to videos and podcasts before anybody else. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Jewel. Thank you so much for watching.